So this video lesson is going to cover reflections. So reflections are, again, a rigid transformation, just like a translation is that we looked at previously. A reflection, if you think about a reflection in a mirror, it flips your image. So the pre-image, and this is what we're going to look at today, it actually changes its orientation. So unlike a translation where its orientation was the same as before, just in a different spot, now our image will be in a different spot and its orientation will have changed. And that line that acts like a mirror is called our line of reflection. So that's what we're going to investigate today. So here is a image of a reflection. There is a pre-image and an image. The pre-image, if you remember back to how we did our notation in translations, the pre-image is just the letters and the image has that prime notation. So you'll notice that previously line segment UH was at the top of the pre-image, but because it has been reflected in the image, line segment U prime H prime is actually at the bottom of the figure. So that's what we mean when we talk about changing orientation. So what happens if I try to determine the line of reflection? I'm going to grab my line tool here, maybe. So in a line of reflection investigation, what we're trying to determine is that spot where my pre-image has been reflected or mirrored over to create our image. So I want to look and find the middle of where these two things are. And you'll notice that right here, and I'm going to make this a little bit thicker, just like we did in translations. And I'm going to make this a dashed line since it's not actually there. This line right here, if you imagine if I folded my graph along this line right here, this picture would lay right on top of my pre-image. So if I wanted to write what this line of reflection would be, it is a horizontal line, which means I'm not dealing with X values, I'm dealing with a Y value. And this Y value here is Y equals negative two. So this would be the equation for my line of reflection. And we'll put that right here next to our line. So let's look at this example. The image in black here is my pre-image and the shape in blue is my image, and I know that because of the prime notation. Now it is a little bit funky since they kind of land right on top of each other, but I can use any of my pre-image and image points to figure this out. So I'm just gonna use E, E prime, since they are at the top. So if you look here, E and E prime have a distance of four units between them. So if I wanted to fold that in half so that E and E prime landed on top of each other, that line of reflection would be two units away from each of those points, which puts it right here. So I'm going to make that line a little bit thicker. I'm going to make it a dashed line and I'm going to make it easier for us to see. So this line here 
I extend it a little bit, you'll notice it cuts these two right down the middle. So if I folded this graph in half on that red dotted line, E would line up with E prime, Q and Q prime would line up, G and G prime would line up, and K and K prime would line up right on top of each other. So in our last example, we had a horizontal line of reflection, which gave me a Y equals equation. Now that this is a vertical line, this will be an X equals equation. Oops. So I know it's going to be an X equals equation. Now I have to determine this X value, so it would be negative 1, negative 2. So that's what it looks like when I'm writing the line of reflection. Now switching to this graph, now it's asking me to actually perform a reflection over the line x equals negative 2. So we are going to go ahead and perform this reflection. I printed it out because I think it's much easier than doing it with my computer mouse. I would suggest maybe having one or two extra colors just so that you can do one color for the line of reflection and another color for the image. You don't have to, I just find it helpful. So since it's x equals negative 2, this is going to be a line that's vertical. So when I take this pre-image, instead of A being on the right-hand side, A prime is going to be on the left after I've reflected it. So this horizontal line of x equals negative 2, I mean vertical line, not horizontal, it's a vertical line. So this vertical line of x equals negative 2 is right here. And to make life a little bit easier, what I'm going to do is actually make these look like points instead of just the lines themselves. Now C, I'm going to start with C. It is on the line of reflection. So if you think about what it would look like if I took my graph and I folded it in half on top of this line, C and C prime are going to be the exact same point because it's on the line of reflection, so it's not changing. Let's look at D. If I'm folding this on top of itself on the line of reflection, this distance here needs to be the same distance over here so that D and D prime would land on top of each other. So this is one, two, three spaces from the line of reflection. So I'm going to go one, two, three spaces in that same direction. Now since B and D are in the same vertical space, this is also three units. So I know when I reflect to get B prime, it should also be on that same vertical line as D prime. And then A is one, two, three, four, five spaces away from the line of reflection. So I'm going to go five units in, the, in that same way. One, two, three, four, five. So here is A prime. So I'm going to connect these with my ruler because I can't draw straight lines. And you'll notice as soon as C 
So if I folded this in half on top of that line of reflection, you should see that A prime and A land on top of each other, D prime and D land on top of each other, B prime and B land on top of each other, and C and C prime are going to look like they're the exact same point because they are on the line of reflection. So that's if I have a vertical or a horizontal line. If the line was this way, I would do the same thing, except I would be counting up to the line of reflection or down to the line of reflection and going from there. However, when I'm given a line y equals x, things are going to be a little bit different. And what I'm going to do before I start this is I'm actually going to list out my coordinates. I'm going to write these as points. So my coordinate for A is 3, negative 5. My coordinate for B is negative 1, negative 3. And my coordinate for C is 2, negative 1. So my line of reflection is y equals x. That means whatever my y value is, my x value is the exact same number. So if I start at 0, 0, my next one would be 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and so on. So these are the points on my line of reflection. So I'm going to draw myself a dashed line, just so I remember this isn't really part of my image or pre-image. So here is my line of reflection, y equals x. Now people think about how to do this type of reflection in a lot of different ways. Ultimately, this picture ABC is going to go from this space over here and reflect to this space over here. Now, instead of a vertical or a horizontal distance, I'm measuring diagonally. That's not always super easy to do on a graph. So, I know that my point B has to land somewhere over here in that same diagonal distance from the line of reflection. If you have on your smarty pants, you can look and see this one diagonal space here. That typically is very hard for people to see. So here's what I'm going to do. And this is how I learned how to do reflections as well. I am going to move this shape, or I'm going to move each point sideways when my camera unfreezes. Any day now. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to take point B. I'm going to move it sideways two spaces. But I can't keep moving sideways because that would be a translation. This is going to now rebound my point B, and I'm going to start going up two spaces. So B prime is going to land right here. And you'll notice, if you can see this, if you can't see this, I promise it's okay. There is one diagonal space from B to the line of reflection, and then another diagonal space from B prime to the line of reflection. But it is okay to do two spaces to the side, as long as you remember you have to rebound and flip from going side to side to up and down. 
So let's do the same thing for C. If I'm going side to side first, I'm going one, two, three sideways spaces to get to the line of reflection. Now I have to flip and instead of going sideways, I have to go, in this case, up. So now I'm going to go one, two, three spaces up. Here is C prime. And now I'm going to do the same thing with A. I'm going to go sideways to the line of reflection. Oops, I wasn't counting. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight gets me to the line of reflection. Now I have to do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So here is A prime. And if I connect these points and look at this triangle, I know there's a lot of colors going on, but Here's one, all right, this is my image, this is my pre-image. If I folded this in half, each image point and image line segment would lie right on top of the pre-image. And if you notice, the way that this distance is, is the same from C prime to the line of reflection and C to the line of reflection. So let's look at this if we were going to think about this as coordinates. And let's see if there's a way that we can write a rule to help us with this very specific y equals x reflection. So c prime is at negative 1, 2. b prime is at negative 3, negative 1. And a prime is at negative 5, 3. I want you to pause and I want you to compare the coordinates in these three points and see if you can come up with a rule, an algebraic rule, that looks like this, that represents this very specific reflection. So let's look at this. If this is x and this is y, how do these two specific coordinates transfer over here. This was my y value. This was my x value. It happens over here as well. These flipped. These also flipped. So if I give you any coordinate that looks like x, y, and I tell you this is your reflection, your coordinate point, flips on itself. And this is the algebraic rule that will always match with this reflection of y equals x every single time. So how does it change if now I tell you we're reflecting over y equals negative x? So you'll notice I have changed where triangle ABC was. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to list these as coordinates. So A is at 5, 1. B is at 1, 3. And C is at 4, 5. So Y equals negative X instead of having a positive slope like Y equals X. It has a negative slope. So I'm going to go through 0, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2. So the x value is positive and the y value is the same number but negative. 
So I'm just going to make this a solid line this time to help our brains. It is going to be the exact same thing we did before. I'm going to count one direction to the line of reflection, flip that direction, and count the same way. So let's start with B. Got one, two, three, four spaces to get me to the line of reflection sideways. Then I have to flip, but I wouldn't be going up because that puts me on the same side of the line of reflection. I need to go down to get to the other side of the line of reflection. So one, two, three, four. So that puts me here. Let's do that with all of the other coordinates. So A, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I'm going to flip and go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that puts me right here. Oops, label my points. And then with C, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm going to flip 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm going to be here. So connecting this, I will see my new shape that has been reflected, my image. Not that I can draw a straight line even with a ruler. So this is my pre-image. This is my image. If I folded along this pink line, my line of reflection, these would line up on top of each other. So same thing as before, I'm going to look at my coordinates and see if I can come up with an algebraic rule for this specific reflection of y equals negative x. So for a prime, I'm at negative 1, negative 5. b prime, I'm at negative 3, negative 1. And c prime, I'm at negative 5, negative 4. So again, we're looking for a rule. So how would I take every x, y coordinate and create a new point from what I started with? So go ahead and pause and see if you can figure out what to do with these to get those. So just like they did before, they switch places. So this is y, this is x, this is y, this is x, this is y, this is x. But the signs are all the opposite now. So whatever coordinate I have to start, it becomes the opposite of what it was before. And I want to look at why this happens. So... Just like we did in our translation video, I want you to connect your pre-image point with its corresponding image point. So let's connect A and A prime. Let's connect C and C prime. And let's connect B and B prime. So what I want to look at, just like we did last time, what are the slopes of these lines? So what is the slope of A, A prime? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
one, two, three, four, five, six. So it was six over six, which really simplifies to one. How about B to B prime? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Well, really, that's also one. And then C to C prime. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Which is also one. If I look at these slopes here, in comparison to the slope of line y equals negative x, which really, this is a negative one, what does this tell me about the line connecting the pre-image and the image points and the line of reflection? Well, one thing is that my pre-image and image point this is one important thing uh, create a line that is perpendicular to the line of reflection so my pre-image and my image point create this line that is perpendicular to this line of reflection. That means this is a 90 degree angle here. Another thing that happens when we talked about our reflections before with a horizontal and a vertical line, we talked about that distance from the point to the line of reflection and then from the line of reflection to the image point, that distance was the same. It's the same thing here. If you look at this space and this space, I'm going over 3 and up 3. Same thing here. So not only is my pre-image and my image line perpendicular to the line of reflection. The other important thing is that the line of reflection cuts that line in half. And what that means, or another mathematical term for that, is a bisector. It cuts the line into two equivalent pieces. And again, I'm being lazy and abbreviating, but the line of reflection is a bisector to that line created by the pre-image and the image point. And what that means, what it means for it to be a bisector, is that it is cutting this line so that this space here is equivalent to this space here.